Hey there, welcome to Jet Setting with Jackie. If this is your first time here, welcome. My name is Jackie. And if you're returning, thank you so much for coming back. This week's video will pick up from last week's video, which was part one of shipping my 40 foot container to Jamaica. In last week's video, I spoke about what the process was like in the US. In this week's video, I'll be covering the Jamaica portion of it what the process was like to get my items out of customs, paying all my fees, and actually getting my items home. If this is of interest to you, stick around for all the details. After I dropped my items off at the location on the 25th and I made my payment, a day or so later, I followed up to find out when my container was actually going to ship out. I was told that it would ship out, I believe that Thursday, and it would arrive in Jamaica either around the 2nd or the 3rd of August. Once I knew my items arrived on the island, I reached out to my broker that was located in Jamaica. Since your broker is the one that's going to take care of the majority of the process as far as getting you your container, that's your first step once you know your item is here. On August 5th, I went into the office to start the paperwork. While I was at my broker's office, I was told about the different fees that I would need to pay. The first fee I had to pay was to Kingston Wharf, and that fee was one hundred and thirty eight thousand two hundred and forty jamaican dollars which is roughly 910 us dollars the second fee that i needed to pay was to a company called arl which is responsible for your demorage or demorage however you want to say it and detention fee so this is the company that you pay because of the container that you use to ship your items here this fee is a refundable deposit that they hold while your container is still on the port. They give you seven days free to have the container on the port. And after seven days, your container starts to have a fee that is charged until it gets returned back to your shipper. So the goal is to try to get your container off of the port as soon as possible that way you don't get charged this fee. After seven days, you're charged $120, I believe is what it rounds out to, per day that the container sits on the wharf. Unfortunately for me, I shipped my container at the end of July. It got to Jamaica at the beginning of August, which if anyone knows, that's probably not the best time for your item to reach the island because that is Independence Week, which means that it's a holiday. So the offices are going to be closed while your container is at the port. And it doesn't matter if it's the weekend or if it's a holiday, as long as your container is still on the wharf, you are responsible for paying for it each day. After my first visit to Kingston, paying the wharf's fee, paying my demorage or demorage fee. I figured, yes, it's a holiday, but I should have my container maybe by the following week. At least that was the goal that I had in mind. The holiday came and went and the week of the 8th began. I went into the office that Monday to see my broker. I had to produce an updated list for my return in residence concessions. The list that I had gotten back in April had some outdated codes that needed to be fixed in order for me to get the credit for all the items that I had shipped. So I produced a new updated list and I also had to pay whatever the balance was of my customs duty fees after they had deducted all of the concessions for my return and residence items. For that fee, I paid about 63,000 Jamaican dollars, which is roughly around 440 US dollars. That day I was told my items had still not been stripped from the container 
and it wasn't really clear when it was going to be done. As far as I know, only about three containers get stripped per day. That was my second trip to Kingston and I was leaving without knowing when my items was going to be released. I kept in contact with my broker throughout that week and unfortunately, Friday came and I still was not able to pick up my container. At that point, I knew I was going to be incurring extra charges for the container. My seven days had already lapsed and now we were about to run into the weekend. That Friday evening, I did get a call that I should come into the office Monday morning because it was a really good possibility that I would be able to get my container that day. So bright and early that Monday morning, my uncle and I were on our way back to Kingston for the third time. It's Monday morning and um, waiting for Uncle Dean to come because we're heading to Kingston today for my container. It's been here since the second and today I'm supposed to go get it. Needless to say, it's been very frustrating dealing with this whole process, but I'm just ready for it to be over. I can't wait till I document and break down this whole process so that everyone can understand what it's been like for the past I want to say three weeks or really I've been dealing with this process for months but the main parts started like three weeks ago so can't wait to break it all down hopefully you guys can learn something and take something from it and um, hopefully you won't make some of the mistakes that I made and you know maybe you can find alternatives that I didn't the first thing I did once I got to Kingston and stopped in and saw my broker was I head down to ARL to pay the balance that was due from the extra days that I was charged for the container. The fee ended up totaling $88,109.70 and that was the charge for five days. I also had to pay the Kingston Wharf an additional $8,000 for storage fee. Well, gotta spend more money. As soon as you think you're done, you're not. Once I paid all the additional fees for the container and storage, I finally got my release order. That afternoon, my broker was able to pick up my container from the wharf. I made arrangements with the office to have my container delivered to my house and we made arrangement for some guys to come down to help unload the container. They arrived at my house a little before 5 p.m. that day and with all hands on deck, the container was emptied in about 40 minutes. Here's the video of all the action. <laughs> excited to have all of my items finally but that's when the hard task started I had to go through a 40 foot container worth of items which were all over the house <laughs> some things that I wanted to share so that when you are ready to ship your items you are well aware of the process. You should expect to spend quite a bit of money when your item arrives in Jamaica. The reason being you have to have that deposit for a demerage, you also have to pay the wharf their fees, and then God forbid your item is stuck on the wharf for an extended period of time, you will be responsible for paying the fee for your container, which like I said, is a hundred and something dollars per day. That can add up very quickly. 
The sad part in all of that is you have zero control as to when your item gets off of the wharf. The best part of all of this for me was I had an amazing broker in Jamaica who advocated for me. That was probably the only reason why I was able to get my container that quickly. So if there's any tip that I can pass on is to make sure that you have a really great broker here in Jamaica. I will list the broker that I use in the description box below, but that is a big pro tip. Make sure you have a good broker that will go out there and work hard for you and making sure that you get your items. Also, if you are a returning resident, make sure you bring that documentation because your broker is going to need that. I am so happy I went through that return and resident process because it allowed me to bring all of the items that I needed into the country at a minimal cost. In my experience, I had to go back and forth to Kingston a few times. And yes, I did get frustrated sometime just because of the fact that I needed my items and I did not have it. I moved into a house that was vacant, which means that I had nothing here for over two weeks. Needless to say, it was great to have all of my items again. Another thing to think about is who is going to get your items to wherever you need them to be delivered. You may want to have that conversation with your broker and if they provide that service, then great. Mine did, which I appreciated. Also, you'll need people to unload that container. So make sure you have all of that stuff pre-arranged before you pick up your item. The last thing you want to do is to be stuck with that container any longer than you need to be. That cost per day is pretty steep. Finally, let's talk about the overall cost of shipping my items to Jamaica, receiving it here in Jamaica, paying all of the fees that I needed to pay. The total shipping cost that I paid to my US shipper was $5,508.39. I paid the US-based broker $110. I paid Kingston Wharf a total of 146,241 Jamaican dollars, which is roughly 963 US dollars. I originally paid ARL $97,482 as my deposit. And then for the additional five days, I paid $88,109. I did receive my deposit back once the container was returned. And finally, I paid the Jamaican Customs Department $63,120, which is roughly $440 US dollars. Overall, I spent a total of $7,628.50. And that includes the shipping from the US, the fees that I had to pay in Jamaica, the brokerage fee that I paid to the broker in the US, ARL's fee for the container, what I paid to customs. You will also need to consider the fee that you will pay for your broker here in Jamaica. And of course, that fee will vary depending on the broker and other factors. I hope that this video has been helpful in letting you see the different process that you will have to go through once your item actually reach Jamaica. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. If you really enjoyed this video and found it to be valuable, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And of course, if you want to know when I've posted my next video, make sure you turn on that notification by hitting the bell. Again, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye.